welcome to Top Truck Challenge 1997. We're here in Northern California at the Hollister Hills State OHV Park. Ten reader selected 4x4s from across the US and Canada are here for the ultimate four-wheel drive thrash test. Before we start though, let's hear from the winner of our first Top Truck Challenge. Hi, I'm Jim Pyatt from Port Orchard, Washington. Behind me is the vehicle that won the first Top Truck Challenge by, put on by Four Wheeler Magazine. Now let's go take a look at some of the trucks that are in it this year. Number 61, a 1969 Kaiser M715, driven by Andy Hirsch. Number 44, a 1965 Toyota FJ40, driven by John and Jim Allen. Number 63, a custom Jeep CJ7, driven by Gebby Wade. Number 12, a 1997 Jeep TJ, driven by Philip Smith. Number 32, a 1953 Willys CJ3A replica, driven by Bill Shea. Number 19, a 1996 AM General Hummer, driven by Sam Stein. Number 36, a 1975 Chevrolet K10, driven by Robert Scott. Number 59, a 1988 and a half Suzuki Samurai, driven by Glenn Wakefield. Number one, a 1951 Chevrolet panel truck, driven by Ryan Millen. Number 60, a 1969 Chevy Blazer, driven by Alex Christensen. I wanted something that I could take my family with me to go four-wheeling, so it had to be something with hard top. Paraflex arms are a good upgrade on the suspension system. They keep you from And these up. side plates, this is eighth-inch steel riveted to the body, just in case a branch or small rock or something gets up under the Nerf bar. Nerf bars are Schedule 40 uh, pipe. We, the stock skid plate, the thing I didn't like about it, it had so many ridges and grooves and holes in it, that when you hit it, it grinds and catches and slides, and it really makes it seem rough getting over some one-inch body lift. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even mention that. It's got a Terraflex one-inch body lift. It is a uh, 69 Kaiser. Basically, the truck was built to have fun one day a week. It's got a 72 small block, uh, four-bolt Chevy motor. The back rear is basically the only stock piece of drivetrain left. I don't have locking hubs. All the lights are still the military 24 volt. It's got a roll cage which ties into the frame. The, uh, the shocks are inexpensive 5,000 ranchos for the reason that they got 13 inches of travel. Um, and as of about an hour ago, I guess that's not enough. <laughs> Everything's stock Chevy on it. Transmission is a, a stock turbo 350 that we rebuilt. Uh, hooked to a uh, 205 
uh, transfer case with a modification of split shift so we can go front or rear wheel drive. The axle in the front is a Dana 44 with a lock ride and 513 gears. Carrier high lift jack and a, a spare which is one of our older uh, Super Swamper tires. Stripped the frame and the body down and sandblasted it completely. Took all the mounts off of it and then started building our own mounts. And that stops it from going any farther. It also keeps it from destroying the flares. A whole assortment of Mallory gauges all the way from transmission temperature. To Some of the playing around we do is, is on tractor tires, uh, climbing up forklifts, telephone poles, things of that sort. Um, 1952 Willie CJ3B 3A. So we built a custom frame and uh, stretched it out. Longer wheelbase. I have an ARB in it, 410 gears. Disc brakes front and back, running uh, bead locks on the boggers and uh, ZZ3 motor, Hughes converters, and then I just had them build at the smallest stall speed they could. Here I have a one-way valve, lets air in, but when it comes back this way, it's a seat. All the steering linkage and everything is just stock car stuff, removable steering wheel. I got all my straps and uh, tree straps and toe straps here. I Fire extinguisher sitting over there. Let's see, it's a 96 turbo diesel. I think really the only thing uh, under here that it has that might be different is there's an extra radiator, a couple auxiliary fans. Extra radiator? Um, the only thing, it's got heavy duty, it's got the snow, what they call I think the snow plow springs. Pretty stock. But it's blue goop, not, and then we, we put this tweed stuff on instead of the factory vinyl stuff. Now how did you decide on which stuff you used? We just wanted to try this stuff. Oh. They didn't rhino this originally. It's all blue underneath all the interior parts. I guess they've got three products, blue, gray, and black. Well, the AC is under your arm. The rear AC, because it's got dual AC. So you got rear AC under that one. Like, and then there's one of those uh, forest service tools right underneath that shovel. That's a forest service tool. Max Yeah, the Max Axe. Um, the engine is out of a... Uh, Suzuki Sidekick. It's 1600 instead of 1300. It is as engine swaps go. Pretty straightforward. There's much wobble in any of that. The carb is a Makuni dual side draft. The winch is a Warn 8. Yeah, I, lo well, I loosened the shackles. The Pontiac Firebird Master Cylinder. It's from a Toyota. These springs are from National. The front are Old Man Emu, and they're actually rear Old Man Emus. It's an, it's an auxiliary fuse block. Actually, no, those are in the same forward back position. Right. So the front of the spring sticks so out further. Forward. Everything's forward. So the axle's forward. a little further forward. The axle's a little further forward. The windmill that powers the plant? I have plans to put a hypno wheel on it so people are driving behind me, they start, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 75 K10 pickup. It's been all converted over to one ton running gear. Running a Detroit locker in the back, 48s, power lock up front, same ratio. And just quite a few cosmetic accessories that are on it. For all the lights and accessories, I've got an Optima battery, then an op also another Optima. But i got to relocate the gas tank, but the Suburban gas tank fits right in the middle. Uh, KC red and blue flashers in the middle, which I have to leave covers on for that. What's the training? T18 or Chevy? Chevy. Rides like a brick, you say? Rides like well, a yeah. rock. Like it does flex it's now, though. Positive. Rough roads, you start feeling the grooves. Yeah. It gets a little on the scary side. You just got to have to know how to handle it. Don't we'll find that in the riding drive. We will. <laughs>
okay, we're here at the hill climb, and there's really only one rule. Forward momentum. As soon as your forward momentum stops, that's the end, and that's where they take the measurement. The rangers here at Hollister have taken great pains to make this year's hill climb the most difficult to date. They've set up a series of steep and silty barriers that will have both long and short wheelbase trucks hunting for traction. Bill Shea's Willys did exceptionally well on the hill climb using a short wheelbase with plenty of horsepower to keep his tires spinning.
here we have mud hole number four right behind me. We're setting up the winch point because we're pretty sure we're going to have to winch. We have the samurai coming up. He's been winching. We're on the course for quite a few minutes now, 15 or 20 minutes at least. Winching slows him down. Driver ran back to camp to get a uh, a tie rod end, and uh, hopefully we can get her up and running again and get out of here. Well, basically, you want to go between these two cones, and then the games begin. From here on, you're in the mini Rubicon. You've got 20 minutes to do this. The cones mark the perimeter. The perimeter is basically the edge of the rocks. All the way through, I don't want any tires outside of them. Other than that, you're pretty much free to run any line that you want. You guys can take some time to take a look through here.
The CJ made it through the three mud holes and up the, the face of the rock wall until he broke a tie rod end. And now he's down repairing the tie rod end. And the way he's able to do that is he had to raise the right rear tire. He winched a winch cable up to a tree uh, through a snatch block down to a roll bar, lifted the side of the CJ up. That wasn't quite enough, so he added air to one side, took air out of another side, lifted his tire up into the, the wheel, wheel well, and now he can move the tire to the point where he can install another tie rod that he has with him. I still can't believe that's all that's holding this 44 in position. <laughs> it is, it's basically, it was an experiment. Even though he's out of time, Gebby in the CJ7 wants to do the course. Let's take a look and see what he's doing. After the CJ left Mark, he motored up the last large berm through the last very deep mud hole and right on out the course. Hold them up. Let's hook. You want to hold them up, Mike? Can we get the oh. Most of the guys have As you can see, even with 410 gears and a lock right in both differentials, Bill Smith's TJ comes up a bit short in the mud pit. The trucks with 44 inch tires and big block V8s to turn them will do the best here. Now let's look at John and Jim Allen's Chevy powered FJ40 taking on the bog.
I hate it when that happens. Serve it up. Probably weighs 20,000 pounds, and uh, you'll be trying to tow it uphill. Um, and again, this is where weight and wheelbase is going to be an advantage. And these little guys, these little maneuverable, maneuverable rock crawlers, they will have you know, their problems.
Let's take a look and see how each truck did after the tow test. We score the tire pit using an ideal time. The theory here is not how fast our challengers can drive it, but how elegantly. Check out our winner, Ryan Millett, as he gracefully comes within seconds of our ideal time. We're here at the Tank Trap, the last event of our Top Truck Challenge 1997. And we've had about four vehicles go through so far. 
and it's taken about two hours. Each vehicle has a 30 minute time limit. After that, judges get in, either pull them off to the side or winch them all the way out. So far, nobody's made it all the way through. Give me a countdown to a ten sec to a ten minute or even number. Yeah, it's not hydro locks, it's just the starter is not breaking in. Okay. And the finish line's over where the samurai. Okay. Oh, okay. Out of those two cones there, they'll be coming to a dead stop. On the hill. Time. On your mark, get set, go. My favorite event, looking back, was the obstacle course. It was just a hoot. I had my six-year-old son with me in the passenger seat, belted in and hanging onto the grab bar, and he was saying, faster, faster, faster the whole way. It's like a motocross course for four-wheel drive vehicles. A lot of tight turns, uphills, downhills, jumps, um, and you need a vehicle that can is really nimble, can maneuver through the turns, uh, take the bumps, uh, and climb hills good. My strategy on the obstacle course was to go as fast as I could without one single mess up. Uh, not miss a single turn or have to back up or try something again.
Let's take a look at how each truck finished in the obstacle course. I was listening on the radio at the start line. The Kaiser was just roaring up the, up the trail. How much extra you got hanging out? How much? What do you need? He broke his throttle cable, and then he manufactured a hand throttle cable, put that in, and just took off again. He came to uh, this hole right here, I believe it is, and his drive shaft pulled out. That was it for him. The Frame Twister, nicknamed simply Twisted by some competitors. This short, man-made trail is filled with off-camber concrete slabs and lots of water. Serious suspension articulation is a key to success here. As we move down the trail, slippery telephone pole-sized logs are spaced just right to get almost any wheelbase into a serious jam. Wet logs and mud pits surrounding them mandate big aggressive tires and locking differentials. The Twister, it'll turn almost any 4x suspension into a virtual pretzel. A little bit messy. It's uh, a little bit more difficult than, uh, with 35-inch tires than it is with 44s. Uh, suffering from ground clearance and, and tire size. Uh, other than that, we tore it up really good for the rest of the guys, so that's real important. You know, if you, you can't get there, destroy the route.
it's not it's not it's angled like this now in the ground there's another one in there Three cows. We're here in the tank trap. This, I think, is berm number five. I'm standing on in front of me is a pool of water. It's about as deep as my neck. In order to get this far, vehicles are probably going to have to winch. Maybe some of the bigger vehicles with a lot of ground clearance are going to be able to come up here, get over this burn power through it, big engines. We'll see about that. I'm pretty skeptical myself. Right now, on the bottom of the course, we have a truck coming up, big blazer. We'll see how they do, but uh, chances are we won't see them here for a good long time to come. behind me we have a blazer this guy is uh, really coming up in fact I'm gonna move out of the way we'll see how he does he's in the trap he's in now and he is really powering through that's unbelievable unbelievable look at him go that's the best we've seen so far not stopping. That's mud hole number five. Uh, I don't know what his time is, but it's got to be very fast. I don't think he's had to winch yet. We'll see what's happening. There he goes. He's heading up now to mud hole number six. If he gets through that, he'll be uh, in first place. Amazing! Alex's blazer conquered the tank trap in only 6 minutes, 48 seconds. Now let's join him at the finish line with John Stewart. Came up behind me, obviously you got through number 4 pretty well. Number 5 I saw that sand hill didn't slow you down at all. Uh, what happened when you got to the last one? I didn't see that. I think it was number 4 that gave me most of the problem. Number 4 is the one where I had to back up. But you didn't have to winch at all? No winch. So you are the only the second truck to have ever done this without winching. This year is probably the hardest it's ever been. Uh, funny thing, the uh, the last uh, truck to do this was also a New Jersey bogger with yeah. Well, you guys got to come down and see, because when we wheel, we wheel to, you know, Yeah, you have, you have some deep stuff. Yeah. It's a lot of mud here, and that's what you're set up for. How's your engine uh, holding together? It's it's still not, it's not running like it should be, but it's getting a little bit better each time. Yeah. If I had another week to do this thing <laughs> yeah. up. I mean, a hill climb, would if, if I would have... Played it smart today. Would have done some stuff right today. I probably would have done really good in that. And, yep. But we got the old air working now, so the MSD's fully hot. Doesn't have to worry about that. I can mm -hmm. run a little bit more timing. I put mm -hmm. the 90 jets in it, so it's a lot more fuel getting to it. So yeah. Yeah. Run a uh, lot better. You showed up yesterday and won <laughs> two events. Uh, you might have. You did well at the drag strip. I don't know that you won. Um, you won another one here today, so you got some good scoring in. You know, maybe your drive was worth it after yeah. all. It, well, it, it was been, definitely it worth it. Been just nice to be here, it would have been nice if I would have got some engineering points and all that, but that doesn't matter at this point right now. I'm having a ball. Yeah. Well, it's gonna it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be great. It's gonna look good in the mags, and I, I thank you. Well, when the dirt settled, we split third place between the Willys and the FJ40, while Phil Smith's basically stock Jeep TJ won enough events to grab second. But the winner, and our top truck for 1997, is Gebby Wager's incredible Cadillac-powered Jeep CJ7. 
That wraps it up for Top Truck Challenge 1997. This is Ben Stewart for Four Wheeler Magazine inviting you to join us again next year for the ultimate 4x4 thrash test.